Welcome to Logic Pro 10.7 and the world of immersive audio. Now, the big headline feature in this update is that Dolby Atmos and spatial audio is now built right into Logic with a native Dolby Atmos plugin and surround ready plugins that are going to allow us to create mixes with nothing more than headphones when we monitor in binaural mode and get them ready for Apple Music. Plus, of course, there's a lot more. Let's take a look. Let's talk about what's old first, then we'll talk about what's new. Now here I have a mono file on a regular mono audio track and running in stereo, we can pan it left to right. And I suggest you put headphones on for this video to really get a full appreciation of the nuances that are introduced with the Dolby Atmos processing. Many men have told you that. So it's in the left side. Without them you would fall. In the right side. Let me tell you something, babe. So we're all familiar with left, right type mixing. Now, the next step up from that is surround mixing. So I have a couple of audio tracks here. I'll just set these to a surround output. And if you've never used surround, these are the basics. Now we open this up and we get the surround panner and we can pan to discrete positions. And in this case, I have a 5-1 setup and we get to the setup in the audio preferences. And here an audio on IO assignments, we set the surround format and you'll notice some new expanded enhanced formats we have with height channels, 5.1.2 and 0.4. And then the same with the seven speaker configuration, adding height channels. So depending on what that's set up as, that's what the surround pattern is going to look like here. We pan and automate and move between those positions and then we can bounce that out. Now, new in Logic Pro 10.7, with a set of headphones, you can transform your music into full Dolby Atmos-based spatial audio. All the tools we need are now native in Logic. You don't need the separate Dolby Atmos renderer app. There are enhanced pan controls, enhanced surround ready plugins, and we can even export a project directly in Logic as a Dolby Atmos file compatible with Apple Music. So to do this, to start with, we're gonna go into song settings or project settings. And under audio, we have this new field for spatial audio. I'm gonna convert this to Dolby Atmos and it's gonna automatically switch the surround format to 7.1.2. And if I close that up, we'll see now that when I open the surround panner, we have seven channels as well as the two height channels here. And we have different modes for how we can position things in terms of the canopy of sound if we want it above and below versus just on the same plane and so on. Now you'll notice that when I enabled the spatial audio option, the new Dolby Atmos plugin was instantiated automatically, converting this into an Atmos mix. And if I open this up, we'll see here that we have monitoring formats from binaural all the way up to 7.1.4. So if I set this to binaural, I can now monitor in headphones. Let me explain in more detail. A Dolby Atmos mix is made up of two basic components. We have audio bed tracks that are routed and panned to surround positions up to a 7.1.2 configuration. And that's what these tracks are. Let's say I had music on there. We could position them however we want in the surround bed. But we also have audio object tracks with their associated metadata. And these are played back using a new 3D object track with a 3D object panner. So the idea is that the surround bed arrives at this master channel strip before the Atmos plugin. So it's a good idea to move your Atmos plugin down a few slots, and then we can put some of the new enhanced, surround enhanced plugins in here. Like for example, maybe in metering, we wanna have a 7.1.2 meter where we get left side, left mid, left center, right, right mid, right side, the low frequency effects, the height channels and so on. We can monitor all the levels. And there's several plugins that are enhanced. Another one that I really like in utility is the multi-channel gain. So again, we can control the whole surround bed that's arriving at this master channel strip there, as well as all the individual channels. So that's the way it works with the surround bed. We position and automate and they arrive before the Atmos plugin, and then they get processed through the Atmos plugin. Now, let's say I want to create an object track. What I do is switch it to a 3D panner from here in this output field, a 3D object panner. And this, when I double click it, will now open up the new 3D object panner where I can pan not only left and right and front and back, but also top to bottom. 
And this is the Dolby Atmos track that's routed directly to the Atmos plugin. And then anything we put after the Atmos plugin is for monitoring only. Like, for example, you might want to put another level meter afterwards or maybe just a loudness meter again in 7.1.4. So you'll get the full integrated signal measured here. So important thing to be aware of here, the surround bed works up to 7.1.2 format and it arrives here before the Atmos plugin. The Atmos plugin will then render it to Dolby Atmos, which bumps it or upmixes it to 7.1.4 format, which is what we're going to get with any plugins that are post the Atmos plugin here. So let's say I'm going to take this same region. I'm going to drag this down here on this mono region onto this object track. Now with headphones on, you'll be able to hear this a lot more clearly because I'm monitoring in binaural mode. We'll be able to hear the movement. Many men have told you that without them you would fall. But let me tell you something, baby. You are beautiful. So we're getting the full 3D beautiful space. From inside out. Now I can automate this and we're going to see new automation parameters when we go in here. Let's just look for a moment and we can see that on the main track, we now have object position, left, right, back, front, and elevation. So we can move all that. And when I open up the Atmos plugin now, we'll see that we have the surround bed and we have one 3D object. It's just called Audio 2 at the moment. But the idea is that we have up to 128 channels available. 10 of them are used right away for the surround bed. And then mono channels take up one. Or here we see one channel out of the 118 available is used and stereo input tracks take up two. So that's the big picture for getting started with Dolby Atmos. When we're done, we then use the file menu and export as an ADM broadcast wave format file, which is optimized for Apple Music. All the metadata for the 3D object positioning is included in that ADM file. And then the playback system is what determines exactly where the sound is routed to based on the available speakers and output configuration of the delivery system. There are also a ton of great new step sequencer enhancements. For example, we can record in real time now when that's enabled. Many men have told you that without them you would fall. But let me tell you something, baby. And then we can also tune to specific pitches. So for example, if I set this now to note, I can tune, for example, that kick, and I can even quantize to a specific key and mode. So if I know this is in F sharp minor, I can tune this as necessary and create a melodic line. There's a dedicated mono mode. We can have custom row names. We can use modifiers to alter note lengths and much more. To learn more about all this and see the whole Dolby Atmos workflow from the ground up, as well as all of the other wonderful new enhancements in this update, check out Logic Pro 10.7 Update Explained at Groove3.com.